In the last video, I finally defined what a category is. In the videos preceding that, we saw some examples of categories. We saw set, group, and top. Um, and I want to stress that not every category has to have objects which are sets of some type. Uh, and so what we're going to see now is some examples of categories where that's not the case. So first we're going to start with a poset category. So we'll let P be a poset. So what does that mean? That means that P is a set and it has some relation on it. The relation is a partial order. So uh, this is a set. The partial order on P is a relation that is reflexive. So elements are less than or equal to themselves. It's transitive, so x less than or equal to y, and y less than or equal to z tells us that x is less than or equal to z. And it's anti-symmetric, so if x is less than or equal to y, and y is less than or equal to x, that implies that x is y. Alright, so how do we build a category out of this? So we call our category P underline, and we want to say what its objects are. So its objects are going to be elements of P. And now we want to say what its morphisms are. So firstly, note that elements of a set are not, well, in naive set theory, elements of a set are not necessarily sets. Okay. Uh, our morphisms, so I want to say what the set of morphisms between two elements x and y is for any two elements x and y in, in P. And we're going to have two types of um, HOM set. The first is going to be a singleton with a map from x to y, which I'll denote like that. Uh, and that's if x is less than or equal to y. And then we're going to have the empty set if x is not less than or equal to y. Alright, so that's our morphism. Um, we want to say what composition is, uh, but there's only one, there's at most one morphism between two objects. Um, and so our composition sort of is forced upon us by the fact that there's, there's only one, there's only one choice. Um, and you should go ahead and s check that um, you have a composition, that it's associative, and that you have an identities that act as morphisms that act as identity morphisms, which all sort of comes from uh, this, the, the, the properties of the par partially ordered relation. All right, so that's. That's, that's, that's one category, this P underline, which we can build from any post set. All right, let's see another example, uh, a similar example. Um, we're going to take M to be a monoid, uh, which you can think of as a group without inverses. So M is a set. It has a binary operation on it, which is associative. Um, and it has an identity element. But not every element has an inverse. Okay, so we're going to build our category. It's going to be called M underline. It's objects. Well, it's going to be a category with a single object. So I'm just going to denote it like this. That's the only object in this category. So the morphisms, what are our morphisms? Well, I have a set of morphisms between each pair of objects in the category. But there's only one object in this category, so the only set of morphisms I need to describe to you are M underline between the single object and itself. And those morphisms are going to be the elements of M. Uh, and composition is going to be multiplication in M. It, the, comp the composition law is inherited from the multiplication on M. Um, so these, are, these two examples of categories are things you can think of as, as prototypical in that the poset category is a type of category where you have many objects 
but at most one arrow between, one morphism between them. And a monoid category is, or a category built this way from a monoid, is a category with a single object, but however many morphisms you want. All right, next we're going to talk about a category that we're going to call delta. Um, there are a few different names for this category. It's, it's pretty important in algebraic topology, but it will be a while before we get to that. Um, the objects in our category are ordered sets, one for each natural number, including zero. Okay, so they're sets zero to n with the natural total ordering on them. So zero is less than n, zero is less than one, etc. Um, for n a natural number, again we're counting zero as a natural number, and the morphisms between these sets, um, these totally ordered sets, are going to be uh, weakly order preserving functions. Uh, so that is, say, some function f from n to m, such that um, i less than j implies that f of i is less than or equal to f of j. Uh, and the thing that you should check is that weakly order preserving functions compose to give weakly order preserving functions. Our composition in this category is just going to be composition of functions. Um, the identity morphisms are just the identity functions on the sets. Uh, yeah. All right. And the last category I want to talk about today is a fun one. It's the category of tangles. So tangles. Um, the objects. The objects are natural numbers. That's, you know, not that interesting so far. Uh, but the morphisms, okay, the morphisms are interesting and they're diagrams of the following type. So I'm not going to write down strictly what this is um, because it's quite messy. But I'm going to say that, say, a morphism from 3 to 5, because recall the, the objects are natural numbers, so we're looking for maps between that. Uh, morphism, our morphisms are between natural numbers. And I'm going to put three dots up here, and I'm going to put five dots down here. And my morphisms are going to be things that look like this. Um, and you can wiggle these strings about, but you can't change the crossings of them. All right, so what's our composition? Our composition is going to be, say, now I want to go to back to three, say. Uh, and our composition is just going to be stacking of morphisms. So stacking diagrams of morphisms. So say I've got this and this. Here and here. Right, and the identity on say two is just this. So we'd call this the identity on two. <coughs> 